Wow. These products suck. 2021, what happened? Today we're gonna to talk about the products that flopped for me in the personal in 2021. Honestly, if you guys are shocked, mm -mm, you look silly right now. I didn't like these products. If I wanted to do that, I would have taken a Sharpie to my lashes, but I kept them around because I knew I was gonna make this video. Long-term thinking, growth mindset. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maria Gloria and I'm here to help you Become the woman of your dreams. I know that's like the biggest claim and like such a flex, but it's true. I, I do that. I take pride in that. I take my job very seriously and I spend my money so you don't have to. And I review products, even if they're really good or really crappy. And I do that again, so you don't have to. So you don't waste your time, so you don't waste your money and you don't damage your pores. So let's just go ahead and get started. This video is not sponsored by anybody and I'm probably gonna get kicked off of a couple of PR lists, but it's okay because my loyalty, it's to you guys. Let's go ahead and get started with the like face products that flop the hardest for me. The Morphe Filter Foundation. I didn't like this, guys. I could care less about this product. This was not a good foundation foundation in my opinion or in my face follicles. I don't even know if that's a thing. The reason I didn't like these products and the reason that they flopped for me was because one, this was a very drying foundation, overly matte, not comfortable, and I feel like it emphasized every line, every pore, and it just seeped into there no matter what primer I used. And I didn't just use it in the Full Face Morphe, which is where I use a lot of these products. You guys, I tried to use it even after, and it just didn't work for me. I used it with different products. It was uncomfortable. I did not like it. No no, no goes, nose. Hopping right along with that, the Morphe, I don't even know what these concealers are called, the filter concealers? I don't know. I didn't care for these either because again, they were very uncomfortable on the skin. They were almost too tacky for me and too drying to where I could feel my concealer under my eyes. And if I did this little number, like I felt it and I hate that. That's one of my biggest pet peeves in the world. I can't stand that in the least. I don't like it. No. I also wasn't a fan of the way that it wore throughout the day. Like I just feel like it got drier and drier. I didn't like it. It creased. It didn't give me what I wanted. I also don't think that their color selection is honestly the best. I know a lot of people are such big fans of Morphe and I totally get why. I don't wanna say they have majority bad products because I don't think that's necessarily true. I just think these products didn't really work for me. And if I'm being honest, when it comes to Morphe, it's not a very consistently good brand. There are so many hits, but there are also really big flops. I just wish I had a little bit more consistency when it came to Morphe and I think that that was more of the disappointment. I had the primer, guys. I ended up throwing the primer away because it just wasn't good either. So there's my stance on that. Keeping with the brand, <laughs> this is the 35S Sweet Oasis palette. I was honestly really excited for this palette, guys. In my mind, I thought this was gonna be like my perfect summer palette and it ended up being my perfect summer disappointment. I can't tell you how like not pigmented this palette is. It's just not great in my opinion. I was literally trying my hardest to pull out a pretty eye look and while the look on camera looked at least a C, a C minus and C's get degrees. I get it, but in real life, it was very patchy. And let me remind you, BBG, you weren't the one blending it out and trying to apply the color and build the pigment. I was, and I had the hardest time getting these eyeshadows that all came in a pan to work well together. They just wouldn't, they didn't blend well. They were very patchy. The pigment was very lackluster and I was just not a fan at all of this palette. I have used Morphe palettes in the past that I have liked. However, this one did not cut it, did not fit the bill. Honestly, if you guys are shocked, mm -mm, you look silly right now. I did not like the Nikita Dragon Face Press Powder Palette. I feel like this one is gonna come as a shock to you guys, no matter how much I'm like, don't be shocked. I just did not like this palette, guys. This brown, too dark. This, I don't even know what it is. It's like too muddy to be a bronzer, at least on my skin tone, and it's too warm to be like a sculpting powder. And this is way too dark to be a sculpting powder as well. Not trying to knock the fact that maybe Nikita was trying to be very universal with this, but I also think that we were missing at least one tone in between these and one tone above and one tone below. I understand that it is an indie brand and she is probably a self 
owned business and self-funded, I get that money can be hard to produce big palettes with small companies, but I've seen it done. The best example that I could give you guys is the Lunar Beauty Outer Dimension palette. See, this is a face palette done right, and I get that Nikita wanted to give us a blush, which I'm not even gonna dance around that fact either. I don't like the blush. I don't understand it at all. The highlights were pretty, the sparkly blush, I don't understand why I had to have so many sparkles in it. I can understand how this palette could be a lot of people's holy grail palette, but it's just not mine. And I don't think it was universal enough. I know that Manny got a lot of slack for this palette because there's no way that it's going to fit everybody in the world universally. We all come in so many different shades, undertones, tones, I get it. But this is him, I think, trying a little bit more than somebody else. I did not appreciate this palette. I, I don't like it. I think the packaging is super dope. I like the idea, the aesthetic. Cool, we love it. But this is what I would have wanted. This is probably my favorite face palette of 2021. This 100% missed the mark for me. I did not love this in the least. Moving on to the biggest mascara disappointments, which were very overhyped mascaras. And they're both from e.l.f., which hurts my heart because I think e.l.f. honestly had a killer year when it came to their poreless putty primers, when it came to the CC cream, when it came to their concealers. A lot of that new new that they dropped, big hits, love them. I wanna waft in it, you know what I'm saying? But the mascaras were such big disappointments this year. The e.l.f. Lash Out Loud mascara, I don't understand why they named it that because it didn't make my life lashes loud in the least. It was very like, it painted them black and that's it. If I wanted to do that, I would have taken a Sharpie to my lashes. I buy mascara to give me more and this mascara definitely did not. And the e.l.f. Big Mood, I was expecting so much out of this. When I saw the jar, I was like, it's big, the brush might be big and the brush is big. I'll give it that, but it didn't really do much. It didn't give me big volume. It didn't like give me fluffy curl. It didn't do what I would have wanted it to do like at all. So I'm going to say my biggest flops for mascaras were definitely both from e.l.f. At least the flops were very affordable mascaras and not like a $40 mascara. The REM lip stains. This was the one product that I didn't get in time to do my full face REM review when I did my full face REM review here on my channel. I'll go ahead and pop that video up here so you guys can check it out if you guys are interested. Then I'm like, I'm kind of glad because that video would have definitely taken a very disappointing turn if I would have used these in that video instead of her lipstick. The lip stains. First of all, I'm not a lip stain girl. I get that they swatch really well on the hand. They do. But when it comes to applying them on the lips, I'm not joking you guys they get so streaky i'm probably gonna film a reel about it just so you guys can see so you guys can follow me on tiktok or instagram but i was so disappointed when it came to the actual pigment on the lips i didn't like it it was so streaky it literally felt like i took a crayola watercolor marker to my mouth and that's it i felt very kid in a preschool experimenting with her life it was giving that i do like the colors I wish the pigments were different. I also don't really know what to expect with lip stains because again, they're not my thing, they're not my journey, but this was definitely not that. And it was the only real disappointing product I, I'm gonna say from her line because I really did like her lipsticks and I love her plumping gloss, but these flop, flop, flop. And the last products are the Believe Beauty Glow Radiant Setting Powders. For what they claim they are, which is setting powders, they are way too glowy, you guys. Like way too glowy. I actually didn't open this one. Believe Beauty does send me PR and they sent me a couple. I have used the setting powder as it claims to be a setting powder and it just leaves you way too radiant, way too slick looking, which for some people that might be your look, that might be your vibe. It's absolutely not mine. I'm somebody who likes to particularly place highlights in specific areas. I feel like that just kind of complements my face a little bit more. But for those of you guys who are like, I like all over glow, give me like glowy setting powders, then this might be your journey. But it's definitely not mine because it does emphasize texture, it does emphasize pores, it emphasizes fine lines, which I don't love love. And and for that reason, I'm gonna say that this was like the biggest powder flop that I experienced personally. I hate to have videos that are so negative, but I also feel like it's all about the balance, guys. I wanna tell you guys what's really good, but I also wanna tell you guys what's really bad so you guys don't carry the energy over in 2022. I'm definitely leaving these palettes, leaving these products completely behind in 2021. I already tried to give them a chance. Nope, 
nope i don't need that energy anymore so we're gonna throw them deuces up and say bye respectfully thank you guys so much for watching please remember baby girl it is absolutely crazy what you deserve whether it be great makeup wonderful makeup really expensive makeup or affordable makeup it is crazy what you deserve treat yourself you deserve it like a lot bye guys And emphasize fine lines. It emphasizes flaunt. It emphasizes fine lines, which I don't love. Love.